Hello, seventh graders. So welcome to week six. As you know, we're starting a new, new unit, Traits and Reproduction. Last week, we really worked with the Asombro lessons and their science kits. To, it was kind of really to help us to think about um, genetics versus environment and, and how, how um, the, you know, like can, can what we see, the traits that we see in individuals or plants or animals, can, can they be explained through environment, like the amount of water that has been given or um, through genetics? So I wanna kind of go through what we, we talk, learned some of the things that we learned about last week. So in the question last week, it was really for the creosote bush. bush um, there are three different deserts and they've found that all in all three different deserts, there's a big difference in the size of the plants. So in the Chihuahuan Desert, much smaller than in the Mojave de Desert, which is the largest. And they wondered, is it that because of genetics or is it because of the environment, like the amount of water that is being given to plants in the deserts that they're in? So the first part that you all did, which if you didn't have a kit, you saw this. If you did have a kit, you, you saw your own experiment, you did your own experiment. First, you measured the length and you noticed that there was a very variation in the size of the inner node length in the plant with the Mojave Desert on average being, being lot larger in length than the other deserts. And then once you did the experiment, you saw that there something like this, which yours had more colors, right? But this was um, different. These looked different than these two. So these are from the same desert, the Chihuahuan Desert. This is from the Sonoran Desert and this is from the Mojave Desert, which this shows that their DNA looks different and therefore ge genetics did play a role. And so if you took a plant from the Mojave, a seed from the plant of the Mojave, Mojave Desert and put it in the Chihuahuan Desert, it would grow bigger because of its genetics. But we also, and, and so we then looked at the desert, the actual amount of rainfall in the desert. So I'm gonna kind of come back and look at the overall. As you can see, both the Chihuahuan Desert and the Arizona Desert has more annual rainfall than the Mojave Desert. I mean, yeah, the Mojave Desert. And so that overall environment does not play a role. It's more genetics. However, when you look more specifically in a specific desert, in a certain desert, so we took the Mojave Desert, for instance, and looked at rainfall versus size, you can see that M1 and M2 that have more rain, they have larger plants than the other ones that, that were drier. So environment does play a role specifically, but in general, overall the genetics does play a role. And so now we're going to turn to really learning more about the um, how genetics plays a role in the traits that we see in individuals. So we're gonna focus on a spider family. So I'm gonna come over here and these are our lessons for this week. So remember, you can always go to the key concepts and vocabulary to look at the vocab specific vocabulary as well as the key concepts and it will build as we go. So we're really focusing on this question, why do traits vary and why do they vary between parents and offsprings and among siblings? So first we have to understand the difference between trait and feature. So that's what's going to happen in the first lesson. And then you're gonna take some time to understand how to use the SIM as well as think about traits um, for our question about Darwin's spiders. So the question that we're really focusing on that you're gonna be introduced to in the lesson is why do traits for silk flexibility, flexibility vary within this family of Darwin's bark spiders? So you're going to be watching the video to begin with on nine. And then this is going to introduce that question about how come traits such as flex, silk flexibility, that's hard to say, can vary within a family of Darwin spiders. Then you're going to take some time to understand the difference between trait and feature. So when we look here, we can see that eye color is a feature. Everybody has it, 
but a trait is the quality that it looks like or shows up in a specific individual. So for instance, eye color is a feature and I have green eyes. So that's my trait for this feature. So um, that's important to understand. So take time to look at the vocabulary words. It's a characteristic that we, all members of the species have. So every human has eye color, but the trait is the specific characteristic of an individual organism. So I have green eyes. So that's my specific characteristic for that feature. Then you'll kind of go through and look at some other examples of trait and feature to make sure that you understand. Then ultimately, you're going to be watching this video about <clears throat> the introducing the spider silk and the different traits of the spiders in the simulation. So the link is above. I forgot to put it in the lesson. So the link for the sim is above the um, lesson in, in the on the assignment page. So I'm going to take a little bit of time to explain some. You can watch the video as well. So when you come here, you can see that all the members of this um, family, right? And then, hold on, you can move it. And see, these are the features. So right now, none of the features are being shown. But like if we clicked on bristle, we could see the different uh, trait. This person, Ruby, has dense bristles and Leo has sparse bristles. The body color, um, Zora has a brown body as does Leo, as does Otis and Ruby has a yellow one. So let's click on Ruby. When I click on her, I can see the proteins and the how they, they're interacting within the cell. It gives me more information about how the proteins are are um, showing the trait, like how does that interact the proteins and the trait that shows up in the person or the spider. So notice how um, over on here, I can see the, the chromosomes and the nucleus. And then I can also see um, the, uh, the pigment within the cells. And if I click here, I can see more information about the protein and how that's showing up as the specific color, the yellow. So you can come through here and kind of find out more information and read, read down here. So take some time to look through this. You can click on different features for this specific spider, or you can come back here and select a different spider to look at or a different, you can see all of the, the traits for this feature, and then you can click on the spider. So take some time to look through that. And then the question that you're really thinking about is um, what are similarities you observe in the spider's traits and observe in the uh, differences that you observe. So here's a picture. So you can talk about that. Um, you can use that to answer the question, but also go into the sim as well. So that is the first uh, lesson. And the second thing that you're going to do is you're gonna take some time. I don't know why I did that. I meant to go to the module. You're gonna take some time to go and to read and annotate this article about the a surprise spider silk. I just went into student view so you can see what it looks like. So you're going to take time to read about, oh, I went to the wrong, I clicked on the wrong thing. I'm gonna have to come here. All right, so everybody's gonna read about different sil silks and different functions. And then you're gonna choose another article that talks about a specific um, feature. So, Notice how when you come down here, you're gonna read chapter one, but then you can read chapter, you can choose which chapter you wanna read. Now, let's say you did wanna read the whole article because you found it interesting and you highlighted and annotated it all. I will give bonus points um, if you choose to do that. So that's something for you all to think about. If you choose to, you can get some 
extra credit for this reading this entire article. Remember that when you come here, you can highlight, you can pick a color over here, and um, you can say specialized cells produce protein molecules. We know that um, the energy that drives the making of proteins is um, glucose and um, oxygen and cellular respiration. So now we're really focusing on like, well, once, like what do the proteins do for us? So some of them, they, they give us the features or the trait that we have of a specific feature. So then I can type here what I wanted to say, like, whoa, proteins give us features. That I could write that and then that would be a comment. So make sure that your comments aren't just important information, that you're really reading the text and that you're, your comment is you're thinking about what you're reading. So it could be something that you thought about as you were reading that you think is important. You could summarize it. You can add a connection to something else that you've learned. And you could also, you could say, oh, hey, I know that proteins are made of amino acids. And we learned about amino acids being the building blocks from the metabolism unit. That would be a connection. Or there could be questions that you have as you're reading the article. And lots of times you guys are, some of you are doing a really good job of answering your question in another comment. As you read, you, you can answer questions as you go along, which I, I find great. And that is what you do for, um, that's why part of the reason that, that we, we do the annotations. <laughs> Sorry, and I need to move myself so that I can. So I'm gonna leave the, student view. And now we're going to go to the last um, lesson, which is lesson two. And it's investigating protein molecules that make up the spiders. So you're going to come over here. Now we know that protein molecules make up the spider silk that allows the spider to do many different behaviors that can increase the odds of survival and reproduction. So you're learning about spider silk in the reading and then now you're gonna kind of think about its flexibility in this lesson. So in the sim, we could see that the protein looked like this, but in re reality, a protein looks more like this. So this is a model um, that, that's more realistic than the in the sim, which the sim is just um, kind of helping us to think about it in more simple terms. So we're really going to be investigating this question, what determines an organism's trait at the molecular scale, scale? So you're going to be looking at somebody build protein molecules and see once they do them, what, how does that represent um, what type to make, um, how do they connect? And then what does that, what happens um, if you connect these two versus these two versus this, how, how is the flexibility of the silk? So you're gonna watch the, less, the video on slide 20, and then on slide 22, you're going to be filling out, answering this question, and then sketching what it looks like once it's connected. And then you'll answer the open-ended question on slide six, 26 as well. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me or come visit me in office hours this week. Um, I am going to have office hours Monday, Thursday, and Friday at three o'clock from three to four. And Tuesday, I will have office hours at 10 to 11, and I will not have office hours on Wednesday. So I hope you have a great week and get lots of learning done.